What a night it was last time at the final voyage. Show zero. An absolutely amazing show that we had here. The land down under Australia. And another exciting night of action. For the fans in attendance here tonight, starting starting with a match in the deathmatch division. Two guys that were on that show at Final Voyage, Episode Zero, now mixing up in tag matches. None, none of the four wrestlers in this matchup are in tag team, so to speak. The death division doesn't necessarily have a tag belt either. However, because everybody was not on that card, getting to see more new faces. Regardless, though, on on that episode zero, as we as you saw on the highlight that was dropped on the YouTube page, you might want to see. Flash Mercer most definitely got that first elimination over Death Bice, and now they are on opposite ends of the team. I know Death Bice would look to be getting a hit back on that. Yes, indeed. Two of the four super rookies that this company is looking to build upon. But first, we have a man who was not on the card last night making his beginning statement here. Hunter Flynn. He is going to team with one of the super rookies, Flash Mercer. What will Hunter Flynn bring to the deaf division? Because this is a match in the Death Division, the Death Division match a little bit different than your normal match that you would see in the TV Division or even the World Championship Division. And the simple fact that uh, nine times out of ten, they will have no rules. So think along the lines of something like old ECW or even more modern like GCW where a lot of the matches almost if not all of the matches generally do not have rules or more so rather weapons are allowed so we'll get a little hectic but that is one of one of the many pros here in first class pro wrestling the diamond mind you see a clash of styles a whole myriad of different types of wrestling all under one umbrella as we see the man unfortunately he did not get his victory the second elimination in that four-way one show zero making his way out here second teaming up went on to flint and flash mercer and he took a beating i'm actually surprised he's out here he took a hell of a beating at that show zero indeed it's only been a couple of days since then now he's back in the mind for Diamond Generation Wrestling, the first class pro wrestling company that it is. And like you said, partner, this division puts its body on the line more than all the other divisions. It's just they will fight injured more often. They will fight hurt. They will fight with blood all over them. In fact, the title is the blood title. It owns by the Dark Horse currently the first champion, Jason Dawn. I wonder if this super rookie, Flash Mercer, can he get to the top of this division? Yeah, speaking of Jason Dawn, the man who holds the title, what a matchup he won it in that two out of three falls. I mean, it, it, a hellacious match. He is not here on the, on the card tonight. I don't even know the next time that we will see him, but... I think he at least earned that title for the time being. But speaking on what's going on right now, another new face that we did not get to see at Show Zero. Indeed, Brock Dyer, the old veteran. He's been around the block. He's been on the NDC for a long time. As we said, this whole company is a collection of men and eventually, hopefully, women that have been around wrestling their entire lives. They've never got a shot or only temporary shots in other promotions. And they're here to make this place their home. And Brock Dyer is one such being. He is a deaf wrestler through and through. We look at him, the wildly vet. He's, he's planning to make a statement here. Right, what a statement he has. I mean, this is what a tag team. And know that there aren't necessarily any 
tags here in the death division, at least as of right now, the standings are, but having these two behemoths on the same team is be like staring at a wall. As the final of the four making his way out here in Death Bison. I mean, it's two super heavyweights on one team. Yes, indeed. Another one of the super rookies. One of the four that we have. And super rookies basically just mean that the company invested a lot into bringing them into this company. They're hoping to be the pillars of the future of this company. Death Bison being one of them. Flash Marshall on the other side being one of the other ones and now they have a little bit of history starting already journey's just beginning with flash mercer got the first elimination in that four-way showcase match on death bison with the la mystica submission maneuver and i know death bison did not forget that it's only been a couple of days i know the wound is probably still fresh because of that yeah, absolutely. What's going to happen here? Tag team hardcore match in the death division. There goes the bell. Referee get right in the middle. I think that's a very bad idea. A oh, big right hand from Brock to Flash. And oh, a little miscommunication. A little miscommunication there. Want to send the Irish Rip to his own partner? Yeah, the corner. Oh, look at this straight jacket on two. That what a axe kick! Referee completely out of position. Bit of hectic action here as tornado tag rules. No traditional tags here in this hardcore matchup in the death division. All four men in the ring at the same time. Referee still in the way. Beautiful Death Valley driver on Brock Dyer who's rolling out. Death Bice taking the beginning of the punishment now. Oh, look at this. Submission, bow and arrow. That Brock. Breaking it up. Giant body completely just prevented the ref from starting to kill. I mean, finding out if he's going to. Do, uh, get a submission victory or not there goes flash to break it up and a big kick right in brock's face and now another pin quick pins table set up on the outside yeah here comes a trash can and now finally death bikes getting his hand on flash mercer throws him out of the ring Look at this. Neck breaker. Hunter Flynn. Bison is not done. Just manhandling Hunter Flynn. Hunter Flynn trying to fight back. Make some space to Irish whip. Guess his head clothesline. But there goes Flash with a springboard tornado DDT. Now, chair into the equation. Oh, but nobody letting anybody do anything quiet yet. Oh, look at the jump. Oh, my goodness. I'm surprised the table didn't break from that. Step up, Tope Cunny Low finds the mark. He couldn't find the mark on that show. Zero finally found it today. Me on side the ring. Brock finally gets some offense in. Takes Hunter Flynn off his feet with that mid kick straight to the chest plate. Mercer got a weapon. And he uses it. And repeatedly at that. It's going to town. No pinfall attempt inside the ring. And only a one count. Hunter Flynn. Flash Mercer have shown good communication and good partnership they have led this match now both men on the outside I said both teams rather excuse me oh 
my goodness! Hunter Flint, I don't know how he got him from that angle, but he hit Brock Geyers. And now with the chair, Hunter Flint changed his mind. Uh oh. Brock Dyer maybe got interested in using that table, could not get him there. Sidewalk hammerlock. And continue good. I don't know if it might be synergy or what, but regardless, it's working out. Oh my goodness! On a power bomb. Both are on the opposite team take care of their man simultaneously. That table still honestly set up on the outside. Yeah, indeed. I wonder if it's going to get used. I'm not sure. Nobody can see him. Oh, look like he's about to set it on fire. And he oh, did. he absolutely did. Look at the smoke on that table. My goodness. And the crowd getting bloodthirsty. Meanwhile, inside the ring. Indeed. Will it get used, though? Looks like everybody in some way is trying to avoid using it because they know if it gets used, it won't be good. Oh, big plancha from Hunter Flair. They move away from the flaming table. That smoke. Oh, big dropkick, but Brock stays on his feet. He completely eats it out of strike. Spinning backhand. Bringing Flash a little bit closer to that table. Another right hand. Look at your chair position. Oh, and a face buster. No, oh, he tried to go for it. And our Cody Clutch. Koji Clutch on the outside. Boss is just mad at us way out of it. Look at that, dude. Boss and Proc on the same page. But once again, Hunter Flint fighting out. Pile driver! And Suicida! And there go that my unintentional signature, perhaps. And they both talk. Back and forth, this match goes. We knew that the death division would be crazy, but we have a sledgehammer. Now we have a ladder, flaming table, and all. Oh goodness! Trying to hit Brock Tiger, flint at him in the hole. Oh, and it throws it. Oh, throws the kendo. And a clothesline right on top of the ladder, and then. Oh my goodness! Submission on top of it, my goodness is right. Flynn might be trying to end it. And he is! Mercer hold them off! Hey, we got three! What a contest. I know fans might be a little disappointed when you get to see the table that's still smoking on the outside. I mean, my smoke is just increasingly uh, building up here in the arena. Somebody needs to put that out. But what a contest if that is a sneak peek of what this division is going to be like that I can't wait. Once again, Flash Mercer getting the upper hand. On Def Bison again, who takes another fall from Grace here. He had a lot of climbing to do, but what a start to episode one of Diamond Generation Wrestling. What a night of action has been so far here on Di Diamond Generational Wrestling. And who says say that we still have plenty more action where that came from, including a one-on-one -on -one matchup between Mike to Mike Tanaka and Zach Taylor, both of which we have not seen yet here on the television screen here in DGW. More matches include more one-on-one -on -one action. Black Lightning Jr. will be taking on Wayne Anderson. This is the TV title as well. TV division, excuse me, as well. A more singles action on the line as you see Pat, Pat Awesome versus Jake Shields. And, and especially here in our main event, the champion and newly crowned champion, the leader of the prestige, Paul Price in triple threat action. One of the men 
that he went up against as Season 0 against Justice Matsumoto and someone who not, we did not get to see previously in um, Chase Storm. What a night has been so far. We've already seen a lot of action here, including flaming tables, exposed turnbuckles, blood, and much more. What a night has been. This action that you do not want to miss. It's the only place to be is in the diamond mine. Yes, absolutely. Seems like a big night. All three members of the Justice Coalition in action. Justice Masumoto and his understudies and Wayne Anderson and Mike Tanaka as they try to get Diamond Generation Wrestling back on track as they try to oppose the prestige maybe in the future. Justice Masumoto took the pinfall loss to Paul Price and pushed the prestige era. Will he try to get a win back or will once again be a Paul Price victory in his beginning days in the reign of the prestige? Yeah, I believe that Justin Mosmoto will be looking for revenge here in that big in that big triple threat matchup, especially since he had high hopes of leading DGW on the righteous path, on the right path, wanting to be a fine champion, really represent something different, but instead falling just sort into Paul Price of all people. Throughout the match, it really did seem like, uh, sp sp specifically speaking of Show Zero, it really did seem like Paul Price had a vendetta against Justin Massimo, targeting him mostly throughout the match, and again, especially even getting the pinfall over him. What will happen here? We're, we're yet to see what type of place, what type of leader, what type of champion Paul Price will be. How will he lead this promotion's future being the inaugural DGW World Champion? Uh, many exciting matches to come. You don't want to miss any of it. And if you're not here to enjoy it live, this still will be on the VOD and available for you to watch at a later date. You want to keep your eyes out for it on the YouTube page. Well, man, a new a beginning of a new era, beginning of a new start here in DGW. Australia's a place to be putting Australian wrestling on the map. You don't want to be anywhere else.
Hello everyone, this is Vince Vanitas, one half of your special commentary team, and I would just like to say thank you for rocking with us for another series here on the EWF channel. For Diamond Generation Wrestling, we are here experimenting with a new format. We still have the AI versus AI matches that you all love, but we will now try for new segments, cutscenes, and storyline, and we follow the POV of the four super rookies here in Diamond Generation Wrestling. Because we are mostly following the four super rookies, these episodes are POV episodes. You will not see every match, or at least for now. We will announce wins and losses in the middle or at the end of episodes and sometimes even in the next episode. We also still have some audio issues here on the first episode and maybe the first couple. We were trying to work through them, so thank you for your patience. Now, back to the action. What a night it has been so far here on Diamond Generation Pro Wrestling. First class pro wrestling. Singles action up next. For us, for our fans here at Tennis the, and those going to be watching the VOD at a later date. More fallout from Show Zero from that final voyage. We saw Show Zero. We saw these two tag teams, the Prestige of Jay King and Jay Kang, took on the team of Star. Indeed, yes, the team I was rooting for personally, even though I'm supposed to say unbiased as a commentator. Jason Ray and Gerald Henderson. What a show that was. Go ahead, partner. Pick it back up from here. But I just had to interject because that might be my favorite team. Yeah, we, in the we saw Gerald take the losing fall as show zero from the prestige. And then how apropos it was, too, because we saw in the end the prestige reigning tall in the main event of show zero. On top of that, but they started off their night right by getting that victory in that tag team matchup, that traditional tag team matchup of that. Yes, indeed, you are correct, partner. They won the showcase tag team match with the rookie, one of the other rookies. We talked about the two in the very first match of the night, Flash Mercer and Def Bison. But this is, you're going to see the other two not in contest here because it's a one-on-one -on -one. but jake kane here he is the other super rookie and he's the only rookie that picked up a win as he got the win on gerald henderson after the death by daylight that's actually a very good point that you bring up it's something that i didn't even quite realize until you said it but yes jake kane is indeed the only super rookie to have taken up a win on show zero flash has now taken or I should say, join that um, join those ranks with J King, but not really fully because he didn't get the fall in that in that tag match that we saw earlier. But regardless, J King does indeed have a victory, and the only one a real victory getting himself. As we see, Rain start coming back out here with the pyro. We just saw the smoke from that table earlier. Now we got most more smoke in here. Gerald though looking. To get retribution. Yes, indeed. You said there it is, a superstar, Gerald Henderson, looking to get a bit of revenge here in this one on one. Will this be the start to maybe another tale in the journey of the super rookies that we're looking to guide this company? Jason Rain, he did not take the L to his fellow super rookie. But I know he's watching. I know they want to have a matchup soon. Or at least, I'm guessing. I'm not quite sure how Jake King feels about that. But I'm sure Jason Ray wants that. But right now, it's all about his mentor and his friend, Gerald Henderson. As they go against the Prestige, who currently lead this company off the back of the world diamond champion, Paul Price. Yeah, prestige, right and tall here in DJ. And DGW started off the match though. Oh my goodness, Poison Rush Springboard points are on at that. Indeed, and our first official television show. 15 minutes on the clock for a regular one on one. Oh, and look at this already. Octopus Stretch. Almost applied the same exact strategy that they did as show zero. Jake immediately gets out of there. Oh, but the do -si do uh, Prince advantage so far. Trying to get the feet up, but 
only eats a high kick from J. King. Taunts, but Joe getting back up to his feet quickly and pays the price as King. That's what happens when you showboat. Indeed, he's gonna pay for it. Now, Diamond Generation Wrestling a little bit different than other shows. It is not a traditional 10 count in the time TV matches. In the normal matches, they don't have time. It's the traditional 10. But in the time matches, they want to have winners. I, said, I believe it goes to 15. J. King throws. Joe Anderson straight into the steel ring steps. Now finally throws him back in the ring at the count of nine. And look at Jay Kang on, on, on the apron. Taking taking care of the turnbuckle post. Oh, cause that could be a big thing. There are, I think there are disqualifications. So if somebody runs into that, could that lead to a DQ or just a simple distraction? The referee's going to have to pay attention to that. When he does notice. Right now, he's not noticed focusing on the competition. Yeah, Gerald hit a Rain. huge Rain. German Rain. suplex. Yes, indeed. Jason Rain looking with good eyes there. And look at that again. Gerald Henderson showing the strength. A yeah, quick pinfall attempt. Looks a far leg. Only a one count, though. Oh. Referee didn't notice. Right, right, sternum first, Bret Hart style. Oh my goodness, a second time. Oh, Gerald Henderson said that they're not going to play by the rules. Well, I'm going to just use it. Referee said his eyes are close to it. I guess that's just the way the game is played sometimes. Jake does not look happy on the outside at all. Plan completely backfires, not once but twice. And a third time. Oh, my, my goodness. He's really making full use of that. Oh, and now he's using it. Finally got some vengeance on it. That's what they wanted. As we said on episode zero, the prestige is a faction here that's joined Diamond Generation Wrestling that is going to try to reach the top by any means. They want their personal brand of wrestling to be the dominant brand of wrestling. Oh, look at that counter. Beautiful power slap, side of the ring, hooks the far leg a second time. Perfect cover, gets a two count this time. J. King kicks out. Indeed, uh oh, he's charging up. No. J. King feels like he's in up. danger. Punch in the midsection. Right. Again, gets it. And now he's charging up. What could he be going for here? They lock up Kyle Elbow. Fireman's carry position. Oh, a big detonation kick to the head. Right, the side of the head. Of Temple. Oh, my God, what a super kick. Almost knocked his headband straight into the fourth row. Yeah, we, he'll definitely be feeling that. His head has to be ringing. Beautiful combination. Oh, and look at this rolling. Frostbite over now, referee. Referee finally Direct. attended. So Turnbuckle pulls Twister right there. Look at that. Jay King has turned this match around. My goodness. Combinations. And now he might be looking to end it. Oh, oh the prestigious moonsault. Right now. Henderson kicks out, and J.K. going right back to what he did earlier. I missed the springboard. That might cost him. Post a far leg. Gerald trying to quickly end it, but only a one count. J.K. still too much momentum in his body after that good offense. I resume now. Drop down. Leapfrog. Spinning, Oklahoma, another pin. Oh, the referee distracted exactly what they wanted. Very unfortunate. Referee still distracted, completely missed that pinfall attempt. Takes to the other side. He's going to make a pay. Snake Eyes right in his corner. But wait, JK still one step ahead. That reversal, dress crew reversal. Not trying to let Joe get too much momentum. 
And now slowing it down, targeting the, excuse me, targeting the limbs. Gee, targeting both. He hit the prestigious Moonsaw early, and now he's trying to weaken him. Definitely can't kick out. Another pinfall. Could this be it? Trying to weaken him. Oh, so close. Another kick out. You see all the fans at 10 and say it's two. Gerald immediately get back in the ring. He doesn't want to stay out there too long, even though he was more like in his corner. A big right hand staggers J. King. Oh, out of nowhere, pop up. Samoan oh, drop. Drop beautifully done. Oh, went for something. J. King fights out. Knows he didn't want to be in that danger. Oh, and a big boat. And he's going back up. Could we see a second prestigious moonsault? No, going for something else. He's targeting him. Is he going for it here? No, drops down. Fake. Oh, beautiful German. Oh, Jared Anderson fighting back. What does he have left? He's a big, strong man, but he got to be wearing down from all the damage. Both men bleeding, two on top, and now back to the amateur wrestling with the gator roll. Beautiful strategy and takedown. What's the drop kick? Dodge. Oh, Steve Roller. Surprisingly, no cover. Look at it get more damage in. More than light, beautiful. Follows through and by Buster. And Gerald finally rolls out, looking to buy himself some time. Might be a smart thing. Get some of that momentum away. Wait, hold on here! My goodness! And look at that rain cringes back. He is worried about his mentor. The prestige have turned this around when they needed to. Oh my goodness! But is J King playing with his food here? The more, the the longer the match runs. I mean, it might play into his favor, but regardless, the longer the match runs, the more opportunity allowed J Anderson to get back in this thing. More opportunities for him to find an opening. Indeed, I agree with that. Oh, what is, look at this! Oh, look at this! And J King throwing him back in. Playing Lumberjack. I'm surprised the referee let that go. I mean, he technically didn't attack him, but even still. Referee letting a lot of things go and back up. Oh, a 450. That might be it. They, my, the Prestige has played this beautifully, and I think that's it. And it is. And another victory under the belt of the Prestige. J.K. getting the big win. My and, goodness. And not without the help thing. of Jake Kang as well. We saw him interfere in the match multiple times. Jason Ray staring. He knows he cannot let this injustice go un unpunished. Will we see Jake Kang and Jason Ray next week? I don't know. But we'll have to find out. Now we seem like we seem to be like in the in the um parking lot area. We're we're in the back here. You know there is no padding. There's no anything back there, and there's no security or nothing. This is not a scheduled match. Rass Campbell is not even on this card. What a kick! Oh my goodness! Where's he going? Oh my goodness! I was inviting. Inviting Zach. Oh my god, he almost tried to bait him in with that bad. Invite him on top of all those. Ah, oh, drop kick on top of all those boxes, like you say. Yeah, I know storage boxes. Zach Taylor trying to fight back. He is tired after having that match. He's trying to fight back, but does he have a chance? And shots. More shots. He's taking a beating. And just slabs right right across the face, right where he's bleeding from. He saw Max that hellacious 
pump kick opened up Zach. He just had a match early. And oh my goodness, suplex right across that candlestick. Oh, Zach finally trying to fight back. Oh, what a punch. Oh, the fighting punches. Slap. Punch. They are just slugging it out here. No type of defense or anything. The strikes, punches, and blows left and right. And that's getting the better of Zach here. And again. Oh, he, oh, he, Zach said he wants some more. Zach tossed him, and they're still going at it. That's a hockey fight. We need to get some security out here. Exactly. Nobody sees anything coming. Oh, that looks like that took way more out of Zach than he thought. Adrenaline running, but now it's run out. Oh, puts him down. Oh, oh that big kick. Oh, now what is he looking for? He's looking to end it. Oh, my God, nice. And Zach has gone completely motionless. I, I don't know if I don't know if he's knocked out or what, but finally we get we get some paramedics. We get some security out here. Max Cap on a complete rampage. He was not scheduled to be anywhere here in the diamond at all. At least no time soon. Especially after that fatal four-way match. But he's here. He's completely taking out Zach Taylor. I don't even know the reason. Nobody knows the reason here. Uh, Zach, we we gonna have to get a, a some type of medical update on Zach or what? He is bleeding profusely from the side of his face. He is completely unresponsive. Out after that reverse cut, I don't, I don't even know if Max has a name for it. Regardless, I I could I could barely get the words out. But this was not a part of the program or not a, not a part of the entertainment at all tonight. Max Cavill completely irate. I don't even know what for, but regardless, we, we, what's the point of this attack? What will happen to Zach Taylor, Max Campbell? What is his goals here, here in the Diamond Generation Wrestling? We don't know, but we hope to find out just as you will. Hopefully, we'll have answers next week.